Hey everyone, welcome to the Burning Eyes Tech channel. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at workgroups versus domains. And in this lesson, we'll be taking a look at what workgroups and domains are and also why, where and when you'd use them, not to mention their benefits. So without any further ado, let's get started. So let's start with workgroup. What is a workgroup? Now, a workgroup is a type of network that you'll typically find in an environment that's got very few users. Normally, not more than 10 or 20 users. So this is most likely going to be the type of network you'll find in a home environment. So for argument's sake, these three PCs that we see here at the bottom, I want you to imagine that these three PCs is in someone's home. So this is a home network. That's basically where you're probably going to see a workgroup situation is a home network. So all three of these PCs belong to an individual in that household. So PC1 belongs to someone, PC2 and PC3 belong to someone. Each of them is gonna be used by one individual only in most cases. So PC1 for argument's sake belongs to an individual called Joe. PC2 for argument's sake belongs to an individual called Bill. And lastly, I think I'm gonna allocate PC3 to an individual called Holly. Nice little lady called Holly. Now what generally happens here is if you need to log on to a PC in a work group situation, you're not going to type in your username. You're probably going to go and click on the username that you want to log on with. It's going to present you with a list of accounts that's available on that PC. Usually it's just going to be one because most PCs are only used by one individual. So there's probably going to be only one account. You click on that account. In this case, if Joe wants to log on to PC1, he's going to click on the account called Joe and he will provide his password. So his username is Joe. His password is 123. But he did not have to go and type in the username in a workgroup situation. That is something you'll have to go and do in a domain work, uh, a domain network environment. In a domain, you normally have to type in your username and the password. In a workgroup situation, you normally just click on the account that you want to log on with and you provide the password. So if I were to go and take Holly, she's going to go and click on the account called Holly. There's most likely going to be a user account called Holly. She's not going to type in Holly. She's going to click on Holly and type in her password. So the username for Holly is gonna be Holly, but she's just gonna click on it. The password is gonna be whatever her password is, which in this case is 456. And you can see the password for Joe is 123, not that it matters. Now, as soon as you go and click on that account, which is a local account in that PC, local authentication is gonna occur. It's gonna check on that PC, that PC itself. If that account in fact exists, it's most likely gonna exist since it prompted you of that account. And it's going to go and check if that password that you provided or that the user provided does in fact match that account. It's going to go and check that in the SAM, S-A-M, which we're going to get to in a second. Now, the SAM is going to apply to Holly. If Holly goes and clicks on that account and provides her unique password of being 456, it's going to go and check on that PC itself if that password in fact matches that account. If the password matches the account, authentication is going to occur and you will be granted access. So if you are Joe or if you are Holly, you're going to be granted access to that machine. Local authentication would have occurred. It's going to check on that PC itself. Now, if Joe were to go to, let's say, PC2, or if Joe were to go to PC3, first of all, Joe is not going to see his account there. It's not going to show him his account. And let's assume for a moment it did, for some reason, show an account with the same name. That's probably not the same individual. It's most likely someone else that just happens to have the same name. 10 to 1, that's the situation. Now, if you were to go and click on that account, which happens to have the same name, and you type in your password of 123 now, if you are Joe, it's not going to work because it's going to check on that PC's local SAM, SAM, and it's going to find that your password does not match that account. So that's the situation of a workgroup environment. Now, as for SAM that I've been talking about, there we go, SAM. That is basically a local database on that specific server that contains all the usernames and all their respective passwords. So in most cases, it's only going to be like one or two usernames with the respective passwords. So if you were to go into PC1, it will have its own SAM, PC2 will have its own SAM, and PC3 will have its own SAM. So each of them has their own little tiny little database that has its own little usernames of the respective passwords. What does SAM actually stand for? What does the abbreviation stand for? It stands for Security Account Manager. I wouldn't say that's very important you know that as long as you just know each PC has its own unique SAM, which is a database containing its accounts and its passwords. 
That is what a workgroup is. It's going to go and authenticate locally on each machine, which is pretty much the exact opposite of a domain network. Now, when it comes to the domain, what is a domain? Now, unlike in a previous situation where we had a SAM on each PC locally and where each user would go and authenticate locally on that machine to that local SAM being the security account manager, which stores your local account, that completely falls away now. So with a domain, you have a server. So you can see I've just dropped the server here. This is most likely going to be in a company environment, generally on premises at the office. Now, this server is a domain controller, which is normally called a DC for short. It's a domain controller. And on this domain controller server, we normally have Active Directory installed or the Active Directory software installed. Now, it's better known as Active Directory Domain Services. We just normally call it Active Directory for short. Um, it can also be referred to as ADDS, Active Directory Domain Services, is what the ADDS obviously stands for. Now, this is a role you're going to have to go and install on a server. So if you've ever installed a role, this is a role. It's software you're going to go and install on the server, which allows you to go and manage all kinds of things regarding your network, including your user accounts and your computers, which is what today's topic is about. So we're not really going to go and focus so much on some of those other things today. Today we're focusing on the computers and user accounts and things like that because we're doing a comparison between work groups and domains. So now to give you guys an example, I'm going to go and use Joe here at the bottom left again. And previously you would remember when Joe tried to log on in a work group environment, he would have to go and click on his account, his username, and provide his password. So similar to earlier, he's still going to log on as Joe, except now Joe is actually going to type in his username being Joe and type in his password being 123. I mean, in the work group situation, he also had to type in the password, but he didn't normally have to go and you know type in the username. He just needs to go and click on the account. Now he actually has to type in the account. Never mind click on the account. He actually has to go and type in his respective username, whatever that might be. And now, unlike earlier, it's not going to go and check locally on the SAM, the local little tiny little database, if that account actually exists in the past that is correct. Instead, it's going to send that request up all the way here to the domain controller or your Active Directory. So that account does not reside or live in the SAM locally. It resides now in the Active Directory database, which is in the server. So what it's doing here is that PC, being PC1, is sending a request to the server. And it's saying, hey, I've got someone here that just typed in a username and a password. The username they provided is Joe, and the password they provided is 123. Does this account, first of all, exist? And does the password match the said account? Of a work group situation, it wasn't a matter of does the account exist because it already prompted you of an existing account. You simply just need to provide the password. But now it's also a matter of does the account actually exist because you also have to manually type in that username. So your PC, being PC1, is asking the server, hey, does this account, Joe, exist? And the server is going to go and check and check and check and say, yep, you know what? This account does exist. Now PC1 is going to say, okay, great, great stuff. Does the password 123 match that account called Joe? The main controller is going to go and check and check and check and say, you know what? Yep, it does, in fact. And if that is the case, authentication is going to occur. So PC1 would have been authenticated or Joe would have been authenticated on PC1. And now Joe has access to that server being the domain controller. And depending on his privilege and roles and permissions, he would potentially have access to other servers and other pieces on the network. Now, with regards to that server we have there at the top, that domain controller, that is normally a Windows operating system you can go and install there, more specifically Windows Server. Server 2008, 2008 R2, 2012, 2012 R2, 2016, 2019, I, mean, I, I think you guys get the idea. So with one of those server operating systems, you're going to have to go and add a role. A role is not something you can go and install on a client operating system like Windows 10, for argument's sake. That is something you can only do on a server operating system. So if you go and add that role, in this case, the ADDS role, Active Directory Domain Services role, 
it's going to allow that server to go and do additional things like creating user accounts, creating computers, creating group policies, OUs, which was the previous lesson, and many, many other things which are still going to be in the next videos that's coming up. So I think you guys get the idea. So Active Directory Domain Services actually does a lot of things. It gives you so many benefits. And using that server, you can go and manage your network a lot quicker and a lot easier. For argument's sake, imagine you want to go and configure policies on all of your PCs in your company environment. Let's say you've got 100 computers. Do you want to go to each and every PC to go and configure that? Then heck no, I don't want to do that. That's going to take me too long. If it was one, maybe two in a small 10, 20 computer environment, then maybe, just maybe I would be willing to go and do it. But in a large environment, it's just not, it's just not worth it. So instead, what we go and do is we go to the server, in this case, the domain controller, you go and create and configure your policies there. And from the server, it's going to go and basically deploy or populate those policies, you know, throughout your network to all your PCs. It's basically called a bulk operation. So don't work harder, work smarter. Now, for your PCs um, to be able to log on to the domain and authenticate against it, and for them to be able to receive group policies from the domain controller, they actually need to be joined to the domain. So most companies have at least one domain. Sometimes they have more than one. So in my case, this domain might be called burningicetech.com. So all three of my PCs, or all 100, depending on how many you have, they would all be joined to the same domain. And assuming they're all joined to the same domain, by default, you can actually go to any domain joint machine, type in your username, type in your password, and it's going to go and contact the same central point of authentication being that domain controller. It's not going to check on the local SAM if your account exists. It's going to go and check on the server on the network. So you can actually now go and grab any piece. It's not like with the work group where you were restricted to just that one machine. You can now go and grab any machine on the network, assuming it has been joined to the domain and assuming it has been joined to the same domain, you can grab any machine, type in your username, your password, and by default, you should be able to log on to that machine. And that's assuming you don't have any other security requirements in place that restricts the machine down to one specific username or anything like that. Not a topic in today's lesson. That is something we're going to still get to at a later point in time. Uh, but by default, going of all the default settings, Assuming they've all been joined to a domain and assuming it's all the same domain, you should be able to go to any machine and log on of your respective username and your respective password. So that basically, in a nutshell, is the difference between a work group and a domain and what they actually are and when and how, where you would go and use them. I hope this video has been informative, guys. If it has been, please give the video a like. I put a lot of effort into these videos. If you're new to the channel and to my series, please consider subscribing. I hope I've earned your subscription. And I will see you guys next time on episode 8. Bye, guys.